troubleshooting FortiGate firewalls. In this session, I'm going to take you through the command line options on a FortiGate firewall. Uh, and we are also going to do a live debug at the end of this session to see how to troubleshoot issues in a live environment. Uh, as you know, that configuration is much easier when you do it from the GUI. But for troubleshooting, you need to know the CLI uh, options on a firewall. Uh, in fact, on any on any device that you are working with. So um, before we start, let me tell you that uh, the command line for FortiGate firewalls is is a bit different uh, because I, I actually come from a Cisco background, uh, so it's quite different than in normal Cisco or Juniper devices. Um, we will see that uh, in the upcoming slides. But uh, it's good to know and learn these commands before we start troubleshooting on a firewall. Uh, and I can assure you that if you watch this session till the very end, uh, you would be able to resolve 70 to 75 percent of your daily issues on, on, on FortiGet firewalls. So let's uh, get started and see what we have. To start off with, let's understand Fortinet CLI options first. So on a FortiGate firewall, we have four different types of commands. The first one are show commands. They are used to view configurations on the firewall. For example, if you have to view a running config on an interface or if you want to view the full configuration of the device, you use show commands. Then we have get commands. They are used to check runtime values once the device is configured. So, for example, if you have to check uh, the system status or if you have to check the version of the device, then you use get commands. Then we have diagnose commands. They are used to gather diagnostic information. So, uh, in instances where you are, you are dealing with Fortinet TAC, uh, you provide them diagnostics or you have to run a live debug on a packet flow or you need to do some packet captures uh, you use diagnostic commands then we have execute commands they are used to run system management utilities such as backups or upgrades uh, and they're also used to do tasks like ping trace or telnet so all in all we have these four categories on a FortiGate firewall um, and the better we understand them, the easier for us it is to troubleshoot a FortiGate firewall. VDOMs are virtual domains that divide a FortiGate firewall into two or more independent virtual devices. So they are the same like VRFs on a router. They can have separate routing, they can have separate firewall policies, NAT, VPN settings, etc. Uh, it's important to know that before you run any commands or perform any troubleshooting, you have to make sure that you're in the correct VDOM. Because if you are not in the correct VDOM, you won't get your desired results and you would uh, be going in the wrong direction while troubleshooting an issue. To enter a VDOM, you get following commands. You, from the global mode, you go to the config VDOM mode and then you edit that particular VDOM where you're going to want to go and troubleshoot. These are some handy troubleshooting commands on a FortiGate firewall. So as we discussed, the execute commands are used to do ping, traceroute, telnet, and options like TCP dump, etc. Uh, the thing that I don't like about FortiGate command line is that if you have to source an address, uh, you need to go under a separate uh, function that is called ping options or traceroute options. So, um, for example, if I have to uh, do a tenant uh, using a source interface, I have to go under the tenant options mode. So this is something I would say uh, quite laborious. Um, it's not straightforward as Cisco or Juniper. Then I have also shared some other useful commands uh, like get system status to view version serial numbers, VDOMs, etc. To view the running config uh, shared earlier as well that you do show full configuration then we have uh, the router table routing table information uh, that can be retrieved using the get command as well uh, the ha status uh, that can be used uh, uh, checked using the get command as well so um, 
I've shared these useful commands that we deal with um, in day-to-day -day troubleshooting. Uh, note that this uh, slide doesn't include any diagnostic commands. Why? Because we are going to do it at the end of the session when we do a live debug of a packet on a firewall. Being a stateful firewall, the FortiGate maintains a session table. Uh, for any session, the FortiGate performs a route lookup twice. For the first packet sent by the originator and for the first reply coming back from the responder. All the routing information is written to the session table. Uh, and like any other firewall, it supports static routing, dynamic routing protocols such as BGP or OSPF and it also supports policy-based routing. Uh, policy-based routing is uh, routing when you make decisions based on certain attributes and you route the traffic according to that. Uh, it's important to note that PBR has precedence over the routing table. So the FortiGate firewall will obviously look for the PBR route first uh, as compared to a statically or a dynamically learned route. It also supports uh, IPv6 and e ECMP, uh, which is equal cost multi-party. So ECMP uh, occurs when you have all the uh, routing parameters uh, on a tie. So for example, if you have a metric that is the same, the distance is the same, and uh, you have to load balance the traffic. So that's when ECMP occurs. <clears throat> Uh, it can also route well-known internet services, for example, Google DNS, Apple DNS, Apple FTP, via specific WAN interfaces. Uh, the other thing that it supports is the RPF check. So RPF is reverse path forwarding. So that means that uh, the packet that enters uh, your firewall, uh, it should go back to the source to the same interface uh, where it enters from. Uh, this is uh, used uh, in uh, protecting uh, IP spoofing attacks. Uh, so if your IPF check fails, the firewall will drop the packet. Uh, and I've, I've experienced that in a live environment uh, where we had asymmetric routing and uh, the firewall was dropping packets because of that, because the IPF check was failing. So it's, it's a good feature uh, to uh, secure and protect your device against spoofing attacks. Session tables are useful when verifying open connections. So for example, if you have a web browser and you're browsing uh, a website, let's say Google or Facebook, you would expect a session entry on the firewall uh, that would be on port 443 most likely for that destination website. Uh, the session table stores uh, following information. It stores the source and destination addresses, the port numbers, the state, uh, the interfaces, uh, the NAT actions. Uh, it also shows the new sessions and the maximum concurrent sessions as well. Uh, so it's the same like when you do a uh, net start on, on a PC to view all your open connections. So uh, this is what the session table shows on the firewall. To display the session table, the command that is used is the diagnose command and that is diagnose system session list. In order to have an in-depth understanding uh, of FortiGate firewalls while troubleshooting an issue, it's important that you learn TCP states. So in any session, we have to deal with the protocol and its state depending upon that protocol. The protocol number is, is denoted by a proto and the state of the session is denoted by proto underscore state. Uh, Note that proto state is always a two digit number because the FortiGate is a stateful firewall, so it keeps track of the session for both of the directions that is, the outgoing and the packet coming back. So, for example, for ping traffic, uh, we have no state and it's always denoted as 00. zero. So, the protocol number for the for ICMP is one. And because it has no state, so the, the state of the session is 0, 0. So we'll see uh, what TCP states we have for other protocols um, in the next slide. TCP session states along with their values are shown in this table. So for example, if the session is established, the value is 1. Uh, if there's a time weight, the value is 5. 
if the session is closed the value is 6 and so on and so forth uh, the interesting thing to learn here is that even though UDP is stateless, uh, the FortiGate firewall still maintains two session state values for UDP. So if it's one way traffic for UDP, the value is zero. And if it's both ways, the value is one. Um, you get to see this uh, uh, while you do a live debug on the firewall. So you see these values over there in the debug logs. Um, the protocol number for UDP is 17 and for TCP is 6. This is also some, something that you uh, come across uh, in your debug logs while you do troubleshooting on a live packet flow. Now that you have understood TCP states and session tables, so let's do a debug packet flow. I've taken this output from a, a live debug packet flow on a firewall that I ran. So uh, first of all, you need to make sure that you reset any previously running debug outputs. So you see that we are using diagnose commands here because this is all uh, the diag all diagnostic information that we uh, gather using diagnose commands. So first of all, we reset the debug. Then we specify the filter that we want to run the debug for. That can be your destination address, your source address, your ports, or whatever filter you want to specify. <clears throat> then you enable the debug and uh, then you uh, mention the trace start. Uh, so I've mentioned 20 here. So that means that I'm going to limit the output to 20 packets. Uh, although I have uh, removed the output for brevity. Uh, but you can specify whatever number you want the output to be limited to. This is uh, to avoid any flooding of logs uh, that you come across uh, while troubleshooting on a firewall because obviously there will be lots of lots of packets going through. So you have to limit those packets so as to troubleshoot uh, in, in an easier way. So for this uh, live debug uh, we are going to check uh, for a packet flow that is destined to a destination server on HTTPS so let's see what we have uh, so start off with uh, you see we have trace ID 776 uh, so we are analyzing trace ID 776 and we see that uh, the VDOM we have is internal uh, which is also shown in the host name so it's the internal VDOM that we are troubleshooting under. Uh, then you see it says received a packet. Uh, protocol number is six. So uh, that is for TCP. Uh, it is because we are uh, analyzing uh, the request for HTTPS and HTTPS is based on TCP. So that's why the protocol number is shown as six. Then we have the source IP, which is a private IP on a random source port. Uh, and it's going to a destination of 10.10.100.1 10 uh, on HTTPS port 443. This is the interface that is uh, coming from Office System 01. Uh, and then we have the sequence number and the acknowledgement and the window size as well. So the next line uh, tells you that it initiates an IP session and it says it allocates a new session in the session table of the firewall. Uh, then it's, uh, uh, it finds a route to the gateway. So it says that uh, the route has been found with the gateway address of 192.168.5.254, uh, which is uh, connected to the next hop interface of next DC internal. So uh, that means the session is allocated, the route is uh, found. So then it will go to the policy table to see if we have any uh, policy denying that or is it allowed by the policy so in our case it says it's allowed by policy 1315 so this is the policy index that is configured on the firewall that is allowing the traffic so in case you you don't have a policy or the traffic is getting denied you will see denied by policy 1315 or if you have any other issue, like I, I mentioned, RPF uh, failing. So if you have an RPF check failing, you would see uh, an RPF check being failed uh, in the debug logs. So this is, this is a wonderful way to troubleshoot your day-to-day -day issues on a FortiGate firewall. Um, and uh, if you learn uh, 
this uh, well you you would be able to resolve 70 to 80 percent of your daily issues on a 40 gig firewall lastly let's have a look at the packet capture uh, packet capture is also known as a sniffer what it does is it records all of the packets seen by a network interface and then you can uh, diagnose them to see uh, issues uh, that are not detected otherwise uh, it works like a TCP dump, uh, like we do TCP dump on any other device. Uh, obviously, it doesn't show any details of the firewall policy decisions. Uh, for that, we need to do a live debug on the packet that we did earlier uh, in the previous slide. Uh, this packet capture can be done via CLI and can be done via GUI as well. I would prefer GUI because it's much easier to do it from the graphical user interface. Um, but if you want to do it from a CLI, you can do it using diagnose commands. Once it's completed, you can then view it in a network analyzer such as Wireshark. Um, Wireshark will provide you with extensive anal analytics um, and full contents of the packets that are being captured. So uh, this brings us to the end of this session. Um, I believe this has been informative for you. Uh, and I hope that if you learn these uh, tricks and tips well, you shouldn't be facing issues with more than 80% of your problems that you face day to day in, in a 40 gig environment. Thanks for your time and see you again.